Is Bamboo Lab ever going to introduce a larger build volume? Are they going to have a large format printer? Is it ever going to happen? Man, they've released the A1 and it wasn't bigger. It was the same size. And the A1 Mini, it was smaller. Uh, so that question has been asked over and over and over again. Is Bamboo Lab going to introduce a large format printer? Well, the wait is finally over. Bamboo Lab's newest flagship printer is out. It is called the H2D, and we're gonna take a look at it. Let's get into it. So today's video is going to be an overview. It's not necessarily a review. I haven't put enough time on this machine to fairly assess everything and give you an appropriate review. Uh, so I have about 150 hours on this printer so far. So I'm just gonna roll through my experiences, some of the things I like and dislike, and uh, we'll go from there. So starting out, the H2D is a large volume printer. 350 by 320 by 325 is your standard build volume, but there are some uh, caveats to that. Um, it has a left and a right nozzle. So this printer has two nozzles now, and what that means is it's going to take up some of your build volume because each nozzle will offset a little bit of the bed because the left nozzle can't reach the right side and the right nozzle can't reach the left side. So what does that mean? Well, uh, a single nozzle is going to give you 325 by 320 by 325 build volume. So you're losing 25 millimeters um, due to not being able to use the other nozzle. If you're going to use both nozzles, uh, which is very beneficial when it comes to multicolor printing, you are going to be limited to 300 by 320 by 325. But there's a trick there. So, this is the H2D build plate. And what I was just telling you is, is if you're going to use one nozzle, uh, the left nozzle needs 25 millimeters on this side. It can't use this side because it's offset and vice versa. The right nozzle has 25 millimeters on this side. It can't reach over here. So what do you do? Well, if you have uh, an AMS for both the left and right nozzle, you can load in your AMS the same filament color, and then you can, in your slicer, paint the object with both filament colors, and that will allow you to utilize the entire bed surface, uh, which gets you back to 350 by 320 by 325. Now that I've explained the impacts there will be with uh, build volume using the dual nozzle setup, uh, let's talk about a key benefit to that, and that is filament optimization. So I have an example here. I did a test print uh, multicolor with my X1 Carbon, and look at all this waste. Quite a bit, right? Utilizing the dual nozzle in both AMS units, optimizing my filaments, leads to far less color changes which means a lot less purge waste, which is awesome because that means you're not going to waste as much filament. It means your colors aren't going to bleed as much because they are going to preload in each nozzle. And uh, so far, that is what I'm seeing. So I no longer see uh, color bleeds. I don't have to uh, fine tune anything, at least not yet. Um, I'm very, very impressed with uh, how well it optimizes your filament changes. So that is a big benefit of the H2D. So before we continue on, don't go anywhere. We have more H2D stuff coming up, but let's talk about today's video sponsor. Today's sponsor is PCBWay, pcbway.com. It is an excellent service. Their website is easy to navigate. They offer all kinds of different services too, not just PCBs. 3D printing, CNC, uh, they offer multiple formats of 3D printing as well. If you want a resin print, uh, utilize their service. It makes things nice and clean, easy to use. A customer service is great and they are fast to respond and you end up with a quality product. PCBWay, pcbway.com. All right, so now let's go over some of the standout features that I've noticed or really like um, initially, and then we will dive into some 3D prints and things that I've done so far and how they turned out. Hey, down here. So a couple of things that I like about this printer so far, which is pretty cool. You have your glass door, the X1 Carbon or P1PS, open 90 degrees. That one opens the whole way, which is pretty cool. And the reason why is because, you know, I have kids 
And for whatever reason, when there's a door sticking out, they can't see it. It's the strangest thing. So being able to move this out of the way, if I do have the door open by chance, is a big deal for me. Keeps from breaking doors. Oh, one other thing is this LED status light. So it goes yellow when uh, it's heating up and it goes blue when you're printing and it actually progresses as the status or the percentage improves. And then when it's done, it turns green. So you can glance over without having to look at your screen that goes to sleep and you always have the status bar to look at. A little gimmicky, sure, but that's uh, actually a pretty nice addition, I feel like. Something else that is pretty cool is it has a vented top that automatically opens and closes to regulate chamber temperature. This is big because on the X1C, if I'm printing PLA or materials where you need a lower chamber temperature, I've had to open the door, vent the hood or the top, and now you don't have to. It does it automatically. Pretty cool. On the X1C, the memory card fits on the screen. Uh, as you can see here, there isn't one. And I have to use a USB thumb drive or flash drive. And uh, I don't really like that because now you have to use a USB on the top. Uh, I can take an adapter and plug it in. Sure, that works great, but it would have been nice if this still used the micro SD plugged into the screen. I have my AMS, uh, my standard AMS. It is a modded version. It's called the Python and it works great with the H2D. So compatibility isn't an issue if you have an older AMS unit. One thing I wish they would have done with the AMS2 uh, was to adapt to different spool types. So they're still in the same form factor that they were with the standard AMS unit. The new AMS2 uh, Pro is uh, still a pretty good setup. Um, you can now uh, heat your filament. Uh, so it is a filament dryer. 65 degrees Celsius is its max temperature. You can't use it as an active heater uh, while you're printing. Unfortunately, you have to actually remove your filament from the feeder uh, and then secure it in place. But it does rotate uh, to evenly heat your filament to dry it out, which is pretty cool. It's supposed to be a little bit faster so far. It seems like it. I like the serviceability now. Uh, no longer do you have to remove the tray to get to the PTFE tubes that you need to replace underneath. Uh, so they have uh, taken into consideration, I feel like, some of the complaints on the standard AMS. All right, so the moment you guys have probably all been waiting for, what did we print with it initially? Uh, so I have a number of test prints here that I'm gonna go over. Uh, we'll start with the Star-Lord mask. This is a PETG high flow, 20 hour print, uh, tree supports galore, everything removed nicely. It didn't have anything uh, stick or any issues there. So all the clearances and tolerances were nice. Uh, no issues with this print. I think it turned out fantastic and it is ready to paint. And uh, we'll do a video on that later. Moving on to a gladiator mask that I did. This is PLA basic, uh, just a simple print with the bamboo profiles. Didn't change anything and it also turned out good. Same deal with the purge basket. This thing so far has really just printed really, really well. Um, very impressed and glad to see that uh, it is on par with the X1C. Hot air balloon. Uh, first multicolor print here uh, that I tested with. So I loaded two colors in one AMS, two colors in the other, and uh, color changes and everything turned out great. No bleeding, uh, very minimal purge waste, and uh, it turned out excellent. All right, so the next one here is these ukuleles. So this is a big deal uh, because this one I used multiple uh, different variations of PLA. Um, so I'm gonna start with this one. This one is done in PLA. I have PLA Galaxy for the neck. I have uh, marble PLA for the sides here. I have PLA Silk and the marble PLA for the top and the back. Uh, and then uh, for the bridge, uh, it's also PLA Galaxy. So this thing printed awesome. Uh, it was fantastic. One of the benefits that you're going to find with the H2D is your larger build volume. So on the X1 Carbon, I had to print with this neck split. Uh, so the head and the neck were two separate pieces, meaning you had to glue them together and everything. With the H2D, I finally have the build volume that I could print this in one piece. So I merged those and was able to do that, which means this holds a tune.
it's out of tune right now, but uh, it holds a tune way better than it did before, uh, and it just really makes it easier to print. Uh, everything turned out fantastic with this. I'm very impressed. Uh, this ukulele here, um, I have that same PLA Galaxy neck, so I'm using uh, PLA, but I'm also using PETG. Uh, same deal, this turned out great, so it didn't have any issues. Uh, PETG high flow, the yellow and the magenta here, and uh, same as uh, everything else. Uh, really impressed so far with the H2D print quality. It is the quality that you uh, should uh, really uh, expect from Bamboo. Um, I haven't had any issues. I am going to do further tuning and testing and everything with other filaments, like I mentioned, and a longer term review. So time will tell if that is the case moving forward, but so far out of the box, this thing is printed and it has done what it is supposed to do. All right, so that's it for today. This is my overview um, and uh, final thoughts. The H2D has been a great printer out of the box. It uh, definitely has the bamboo reputation so far of being able to just kind of print and forget it. Uh, you don't have to babysit it like uh, some other printers out there. Um, and I haven't ran into any issues in terms of reliability. Now we will see long-term, as I mentioned earlier in this video, I am going to do a long-term review, a more in-depth with everything, uh, and that this was just an overview. Uh, so all in all, Great printer. The AMS2, it works well. The heater is a welcomed addition. Um, you can power the uh, heater and everything with the H2D. If you need to add a second AMS and you want that one to have the heater as well, uh, you do have to buy a separate power adapter and power that one. Um, but everything works. It, I know I've said it a couple of times now, but it just does. And that is what you come to expect from a bamboo printer. And that is what we're all looking for. So finally, the large volume printer is here and uh, I will keep you guys posted on that longer term review. Comments, thoughts, everything. Put it down below in the comments section. I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Uh, if you guys have an H2D, if you're having problems or anything with it, if you need help setting it up, uh, please let me know, here to help. And uh, you know, without you guys, um, I wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you, I really do appreciate it. And uh, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.